Uh, our founded, uh, company was founded in 2007 by two top coronary stent inventors looking to apply their fluid dynamics expertise to a new clinical challenge. We're developing the only minimally invasive microstent for glaucoma that dilates and reconstructs the eye's natural outflow path, which is Schlem's Canal. We've got 25 folks in the company. We've raised $107 million to date. We've done over 2,500 eyes across the globe, about half of those in standalone procedures and about half of those in combination cataract. And we will present our full two-year US pivotal trial results at next year's AAO. So how will Ivantis not only differentiate but lead in this increasingly interesting and competitive MIG space? Well, first, we have the only device that not only reconstructs but augments the eye's natural outflow path. This is our device, the Hydrus Microstent. It has a trimodal mechanism of action. It's got a 90 degree coverage of Schlem's Canal. It dilates and it's got optimal flow. You see the device here in Schlem's Canal. If you look to the far left, you can see a wide open inlet to allow aqueous humor to enter the body of the device. And then if you look to the right, you see three windows that gently stretch the trabecular meshwork to allow flow across the body of the device as well. If you look at this image here on the left, this is evidence of the dilation and reconstruction of Schlem's canal. Schlem's canal is naturally elliptically shaped, and we increase the cross-sectional diameter of Schlem's canal gently by about four to five times its natural size. And if you look at the image on the right there, you see clear evidence of our 90-degree coverage and scaffolding of Schlem's canal, allowing the device and the practitioner to access multiple collector channels. This is an image from a fluorescein dye study where researchers injected microspheres of dye into cadaver eyes, and again and again, the vast majority of the dye is in the region of the hydrus device. It's a very unique device. This is our surgical procedure. Surgeons like to refer to it as a highly verifiable procedure. You see the device going into Schlem's canal right now. You see those three windows of the device that I just referred to. You'll see the implant here disengaged from the delivery system. And now you'll see the surgeon looking distally and actually seeing a fully stented and dilated nasal quadrant of Schlem's canal. You see three windows that allow flow across those windows. And in a, in a second, you'll see on the right the inlet that allows fluid into the body of the device. When the device is placed, it stays there. We don't have a single case of migration documented in over 2,700 cases. Second, it all comes down to clinical data, as we all know, and we are very confident we'll have superior clinical data in the initial served mar MIGS market, which is phaco glaucoma. These are some of the more notable trials in the phaco MIGS space from some of the uh, excellent competitors in our arena. Uh, our trial will be the largest U.S. pivotal trial. Again, we'll report these results next year, and the only one with global uh, patients in the trial. About four years ago, in advance of our U.S. pivotal trial, in anticipation of it, we went to Europe and we ran what is essentially a surrogate trial of our U.S. pivotal trial. Very similar trial design, very similar patient population. We feel very confident through this. We have an excellent idea of what our clinical results will show. Uh, could you advance, please? Thank you. Uh, this trial was looking at Hydrus plus FACO versus FACO alone in mild to moderate glaucoma, and it was published in Ophthalmology just over a year ago. And looking at the primary endpoint of this trial, which is now the primary endpoint of many of the pivotal trials in the United States, the proportion of patients with a 20% or greater drop in pressure, if you look to the right, the Hydrus was 80% successful at two years versus only 46% for cataract control. This was a highly statistically significant result, the most resounding result in any level one MIG study to date in the mild to moderate population. It gives us tremendous confidence of what we'll see in our U.S. pivotal results, which we'll report next year. We will, we're confident we'll have best in class efficacy in the mild to moderate population. Next, we believe we have the broadest potential in the exciting standalone population, which is expected to be three to five times the size of the combination cataract market. A tremendous opportunity exists today between the patients on the left who are undergoing laser therapy or on one medication, and then the patients on the far right there who are undergoing trabeculectomy, who have more advanced disease. And this gap can be filled by MIGs, but a device has to be extremely safe to move further to the left in this treatment paradigm. And we believe the hydrus, through our safe reconstruction of the natural outflow canal, is going to offer that. 
And the reason we feel this way is the surgeons are voting with their feet internationally. Over the last year, we've had a number of papers and presentations uh, generated independently uh, looking at the hydrus in a vast array of it disease. And so on the left here, as one example, hydrus against laser trabeculoplasty showing superior efficacy but safety similar to laser, which is a, a tremendous finding. If you look at the middle, moving to the right, a little more moderate disease, hydrus compared to canaloplasty at 24 months. Again, uh, uh, the hydrus shown to be as efficacious as canaloplasty but with a much less invasive and simpler procedure. And then moving to the right, into the most advanced disease, refractory patients. A month ago in Copenhagen, Dr. Leon Al reported on hydrus in failed prior incisional glaucoma patients. We're very excited about that opportunity, and we'll be working hard on that going forward. And finally, we view the hydrus not uh, as just a device. Uh, we view it as an expandable platform for the future for more complex uh, disease. It's a, it's a large device, which we think is what makes it so efficacious. But we have a project in place, uh, a research collaboration with a top ap academic institution to put a 24-hour pressure sensor uh, on the device. Um, we also have some projects ongoing to coat the device uh, with polymeric-based drug delivery. We believe we can elude a meaningful volume of drug over an extended period of time. And finally, we believe, based on input from our advisory board, that there are some tremendous synergies between the hydrus and some of the timed uh, uh, bioabsorbable uh, sustained release platforms uh, being developed by some of the folks even in this room here today. So these are the things we're working on at Ivantis, and I appreciate your time. Thank you.